pre presenting Joan Fontaine in The Girl Lincoln Loved, with Walter Houston as Cavalcade's commentator on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by E.I. DuPont, Dina Moores and Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Before I play this evening, we want to tell you about a DuPont product. It was made especially for your home decoration. It's Speed Easy, a wall finish you can use right over wallpaper and other wall surfaces. It's a beautiful velvety finish, finish that vanishes dreary, dingy walls and makes them cheerful, bright, and new. Speed Easy is just what its name says. It's speedy and it's easy. All you do is thin Speed Easy with water and apply it with a large brush or roller. It dries in less than an hour. There are 11 clear, beautiful pastel shades from which to choose. Just remember, it's Speed Easy, and it's made by DuPont. Tonight in the sixth in Cavalcade's fall series of great stars and great radio plays, the DuPont Company presents Joan Fontaine as Anne Rutledge in The Girl Lincoln Loved. In coming weeks, Cavalcade will bring you Clark Gable, Charles Lawton, Loretta Young, and many others. And now to raise the curtain on this evening's play, here is your Cavalcade commentator, Walter Houston. Good evening. Tonight, our Cavalcade star is a very lovely young lady, a brilliant actress and Academy Award winner, Joan Fontaine. Our Cavalcade play is a love story. In some respects, it is like a great many love stories, but in many respects, it is also different. The characters, for instance, or I should say the boy and girl, are already well known to you. And even before the first line is spoken, you will anticipate the ending of the story, because its ending is a legend you'll find in any history book. And the ending is not a happy one. The boy in tonight's cavalcade is Abe Lincoln, age 24, tall, straight, strapping lad, and with no thoughts of ever becoming president. The girl, of course, is Anne Rutledge, and the story concerns their few happy moments together. But mostly, our play is about Anne Rutledge herself, and her father and mother and brothers and sisters, and her everyday life and the qualities that made her the girl Lincoln loved. Now, on behalf of the DuPont Company, I take pleasure in presenting Joan Fontaine as Anne Rutledge with John McIntyre as Abe Lincoln in Norman Corwin's play, The Girl Lincoln Loved, on the Cavalcade of America. Let me tell you about the girl humming that tune. Her name is Anne Rutledge. A long time ago, she lived with her mother and father and seven brothers and sisters in a tavern in New Salem, Illinois. Her name is familiar to you because a great man fell in love with her and never got over it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have known about her. She was a bit prettier than average, but still, very much like a lot of other girls, you know yourselves. Anne was not a phantom or a legend. She was a girl. She was happy. She was sad and angry and coy, and gentle and wise. She had fears, she had dreams, and it is these things that our story is about. First of all, Anne Rutledge was a girl. Mother. Yes, Anne? Can I ask you something important? Can it wait until we do the dishes? Oh, yes, I guess it can wait all right. Well, tell me, what is it? Don't laugh at me now. Come, do you want to ask me or don't you? Mother, what's it like to be in love? What? Why, Anne, now, why should a thought like that be in your head at this hour of the morning? Because I've been thinking about it all night. You have? Yes, I, I just couldn't sleep, and I kept listening to the crickets and the frogs and the house creaking. And did you know there's a screech owl down in the glen somewhere? No. There is, because I heard it. I also heard Pa snoring. And I heard that myself. Toward morning, it got very still, and it seemed everything went to sleep, even the crickets and the frogs. And then I could hear my heart beating slow like this. Bump, 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 bump. So slow, I was afraid it would stop. Maybe you shouldn't eat eaten before you went to bed, Anne. Oh, no, I felt fine. Only I... I kept wondering how it must be to hear all those things when you're... Well, when you're in love. I mean, 
when a man's in love with you and... Now, see here, Anne. You're too young to be bothering your head with thoughts the likes of that. Too young? I'm 17, ain't I? How old were you when you fell in love? Oh, 16. Well, there. Mother, what's it like? Oh, it's... It's just what you suppose it's like. Just what you imagine it's like. If it's what I imagine, then it's like the way the leaves stirred all last night. And the little sounds kept coming from far away. Or it's like how the hay smelled at Tuttle's farm just after they finished mowing last week. Like warm blankets and soft pillows when you're all snug in bed and it's blowing a blizzard outside and there's icicles on the windows. <laughs> oh, is it... Is it anything like that, Mother? Yes, Anne. Sometimes. When it's unspoiled. That's the nice part of love. The nice part? But what can there be bad about being in love? Oh, some things. Some things I hope you'll never find out about. Yes. Anne Rutledge was just an average girl, and she was happy. Whoa, whoa there. Do you mind my stopping? Why should I mind? Well, because I stopped just to look at you. Then I do mind, John McNeil. But it's so hard to see your eyes when I'm looking at the road. Why, oh, Anne, you're blushing. Am I? Yeah. Rather becomes you, too. Well, I'm not blushing. It's just the heat of the day. I'm, I'm very warm, that's all. Oh, whatever it is, you're awful pretty. Well, I'm glad you think so, John. Anne, would you mind if I kissed you? Kiss me? Yes. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, no, I wouldn't mind. Anne. John. John. Want to know something? What? That was the first time in my life I've ever been kissed. Want to know something, man? What? Well, here's the second. Yes, Anne Rutledge was a happy girl. But sometimes she was sad. Good night, well, Mr. Rutledge. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Judge Green. Good night. Good night, Mr. Lincoln. I must say, Abe Lincoln's a funny man. I swear I never did hear anybody tell stories the way he tells them. And he don't have to wet his whistle to do it, either. He's a fine Christian gentleman, Mr. Lincoln is. Did you hear the one he told about the... Say, land sakes, Ann, what are you looking so glum about? Didn't you think that bear story of Lincoln's was funny? I wasn't listening to Mr. Lincoln. I'm going upstairs to bed. Good night, Mother. Good night, dear. Good night, Father. Good night. Good night. God, please bless mother and father and their children and John McNeil. And please make John change his mind and come back to New Salem as he promised me he would. Because I'm so lonely since he went back east. Dear God, make him come back to me. I love him so much. So very much. Anne Rutledge was a girl, happy and sad. She had a spirit. Uh, easy there. He's bleeding bad. Give him air. Give the poor man some air. Why, that's a nasty cut on his head there. <sighs> He's coming too. He'll be all right. Oh, my head. Yeah. Well, now, is there anyone else cares to give an opinion about my drinking too much? There is. Just speak up. And I'll pile them in the corner with Mr. Williams and the rest of the wreckage. Maybe that'll teach you to let me and the boys drink in peace 
without no preaching as to how a gentleman should conduct himself in a tavern. Now, listen here, Jack Armstrong. As proprietor of this tavern, I have a right to... Rutley, Rutley. you see what I just done to Williams? Yes, and also what you've done to my good chair. Well, I'll break another one over your head if you don't shut up. Just because you can lick everybody in town, you don't have to bully and strut all over the place. I wish I were younger, Armstrong. I'd take you on. Why, you bald-headed old coot, Rutledge, I'll take anybody on, young and old together. I'll take them on in pairs, I will. Ain't a man in town's got guts enough to stand up to me. Is there? Ah, that's the right answer. Hey, Ma Rutledge, some more of this liquor and quick, for I'm a powerful, thirsty man. Well, drink yourself to death if you want to. Sooner the better for us. <laughs> hey, hey, Annie, what do you think you're doing? Taking this whiskey away from you. You made enough trouble for one night. Anne, come over Just a minute, Annie, my gal. Just Let a minute. Let go of me, you Annie. filthy pig. Hey, 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 that, that hurt. I meant it to hurt. You did, huh? Well, look here now. You... That hurt too, didn't it? Uh, you, 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 you wouldn't have dared done that if you was a man. If you was a man, I wouldn't have to. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, no man dare stand up to me that way. Oh, yes, there would. All right, who? Name him. Have you tried Abe Lincoln? <laughs> Lincoln? <laughs> that long-legged, flop here donkey? I'd like to see you call him that to his face. You would, would you? Well, come around tomorrow by the store, say, around the middle of the morning. I'll be there. It'll be a great pleasure to see him carry you out. Yes, Anne Rutledge was a girl. She could be happy and sad and angry and gentle. Aren't you getting too much sun on you, Mr. Lincoln? It won't make much difference to a face like mine. Sun shining on the water, that can burn too. Never heard of the Sangamon River burning anybody. <laughs> All right, but don't say I didn't warn you. Well, for anything concerning my looks, I'm afraid I'll have to take full responsibility. You're, you're not bad looking, Mr. Lincoln. Light bother your eyes, Miss <laughs> Anne? No, I can see fine. I, I like your looks. Well, thank you. You're being very kind. Aren't you going to say anything about mine? You know, I'm not very good at, at expressing myself on things I feel very deeply about. You feel very deeply about my looks? About you, Miss Anne. Oh. I don't suppose I have any right to hope, but I do, nevertheless. I hope that someday I might perhaps be worthy of your affection. But in the meantime, though, I hope you'll just let me keep on seeing you, that you'll let me take you for walks, sit with me again like this on the bank of the river, and... Mr. Lincoln? Yes? How is your memory? Why, all right, I guess. Do you remember how you threw Jack Armstrong the time he came down to the store looking for a fight? Oh, yes. And how you got your arms around him and spun him head over heels? Mm-hmm. Well... Why don't you try putting your arms around me, but leave out the spin? You're listening to Joan Fontaine as Anne Rutledge in The Girl Lincoln Loved on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by E.I. DuPont, Dinamours and Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Now as we continue our play... Here is Walter Houston. The girl Lincoln loved, a bit prettier than average, but still very much like a lot of other girls. A girl who was by turns sad and happy, who loved life and understood it, who was sensible and sensitive. All these are not very exceptional traits, but then Anne was not an exceptional girl, just an average girl, but a girl loved by Abe Lincoln. Yes, Anne Lutridge was gentle. She was also... Wise. Sister. Yes, Peter? Which do you think is the best? A soldier or a sailor? Mm, I'm sure I don't know. That's been worrying me. 
Very well, now let me read, please. Sister. Anne. What? Do sailors get seasick? Can't you see I'm trying to read, Peter? I only wanted to know. I was only asking. Oh, I'm sorry, Peter. I'm just trying to read. What do you want to know? Do sailors get seasick? Well, I shouldn't think so. Not good sailors, anyhow. Why'd you ask? I was just wondering what I'd be when I grew up. A soldier or a sailor? I think I'll be a soldier. <laughs> Why? So I can lick all the old Indians and they'll run away when they see me coming. Come over here, Peter. Have you been listening to old Dan Potter? Well, he killed 22 old Indians with his bare fist. Because Indians aren't to be trusted and they're no good no how. Dan Potter is just an old liar. The only Indians he ever saw were those old trappers that come to trade every winter at Malcolm's store. Get the idea out of your head that Indians are no good know-how. Anyway, know-how is no word anyhow. But wouldn't the Indians run away if they saw a soldier coming with a gun loaded? I doubt it. Ask Abe Lincoln sometime about the Black Hawk War. He was a captain in the war, and he didn't see any Indians running away from white men. In fact, to the contrary. Yes, but white men aren't afraid to die. Nobody likes to die. Red or white or yellow or black. It's just like Mr. Lincoln says. The two most unpopular things in the world are not being free and being dead. Gosh, being dead's worse than anything. I wouldn't be sure. Everybody has to die sometime. And there's nothing they can do about it. But there's plenty a man can do about not being free. Anne? Yes? Do sailors have to learn how to swim? Uh, Mrs. Rutledge. Yes, doctor? Uh, you'll have to keep Anne as quiet as possible. She mustn't get out of bed. Oh, is it that serious, doctor? Yes. Will she... Be a long time getting well? Mrs. Rutledge, Anne's not going to get well. Oh, no. You might as well know now. How long will it be, Doctor? Oh, it might be two days. It might be two weeks. <laughs> I'm terribly... I'm sorry. I'm... Going into her. I've told you nothing now. There. Do I look all right? Yes. I'll wait here. And, dear? Yes, Mother. Are you comfortable? Is everything. I feel wretched, Mother. You're going to be all right. Doctor says so. He says so? Mm hmm. You're going to be all right. Do you believe him? Why, of course, Anne. What a question. Has Abe been here since yesterday? He came last night, but you were asleep and he didn't want to disturb you. Even if I'm asleep, please wake me up when he comes, Mother. No. Not if you're asleep, dear. The doctor says you need all... Mother, I'll get enough rest more than I need, please. I want to see Abe when he comes. Yes, dear. Of course. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Mother. I didn't mean to sound cross. There. There, now lie back. Here. This will cool you. You see, i got to talk to Abe because... Well, you know how I feel about him. Yes, Anne. I know. I love him. I love him. I, I, I've got to see him now. Or, or what? Never, Mother. Never. You mustn't talk so much, Anne. Rest. Let me just look at you and wish hard. 
Wish hard. Wish so hard that nothing can stand up against me. Like a... Like a tornado blowing the sky right off its hinges. Then I'd wish away your fever. I'd wish... Hey, you... What, what are you going to do when I'm gone? When you're gone? What I do when I'm 80 is no concern to me right now. Do you love me, Abe? I... I am. I... God in heaven, man. I... I know. You once told me you weren't very good at expressing yourself on the things you feel deeply about. Yes. That's it. That if you love me, Abe, go on and... And be the man I know you can be. Go on, because it's what I'd want you to be if I was with you. Be a big man, Anne. I'll never even be a little man without you. I'll be nothing. Abraham Lincoln, I know you. I know you better than you know yourself. You'll grieve for me a bit. But you'll be all right after a while when you find out that grieving doesn't help Abe, if it's at all possible for me to be near you after I'm gone, if in any way I... Oh, God. Then I, I will come to you, Abe. I will. Please, Anne, you're tiring yourself. And when your mind's at peace and you go back to your books and you'll be great because you're just naturally made that way. I don't want to be great. I just want you to be well again. Now, you get some rest now. You're going to be all right. I'll stay right here by your side. Please now, my sweet. Yes, I, I am a bit tired. That's right. Just rest now. You, you won't leave me, will you? No, dear, I won't leave you. I'll... Never leave you. Good. Good. Yes, Anne Rutledge died, and all that was young and gay and Abe Lincoln died with her. And a sadness came into Lincoln's eyes that never left them. Joan Fontaine and John McIntyre and the members of tonight's Cavalcade cast, our thanks. <laughs> often, often Cavalcade has told stories of heroes, many of them war heroes, but war also has heroes who never fire a gun. But the nature and worth of their heroism is unquestioned. I am speaking specifically about 14 soldiers of our army, the staff sergeant, four corporals, seven privates, and two technicians, who were awarded the Legion of Merit not long ago for a dangerous assignment which never took them near the line of fire. This is the story. Our troops in several countries have suffered terribly from sand fly fever. The carrier of the disease is a small fly, an eighth of an inch long. Its bite is painful. Then two or three days later, the soldier who has been bitten develops symptoms like those of a severe case of influenza. His temperature goes up to 102, even 104. He may be out of action for two weeks. In an attempt to control sand fly fever, the office of the Surgeon General called for volunteers. The 14 men who volunteered had not only courage, but willingness to sacrifice their health, perhaps even their lives, for their fellow men. One group received injections of the blood from the other men with the fever. The second group submitted to bites from the infected sand flies. Thanks to these 14 men, the army gained knowledge of sand fly fever and brought it under control. But let Gain Whitman tell you more about it. 
Now, protection against sand flies and other disease-carrying insects is secured through chemical insect repellents used externally. One of the most effective being dimethyl phthalate. Dimethyl phthalate drives away mosquitoes, flies, fleas, gnats, and chiggers, as well as sand flies. It works to a certain degree on ticks. Unlike citronella, the old standby, dimethyl phthalate has next to no odor. It looks like water. But applied to the skin, it gives protection for as long as six hours. Sprayed on the clothing, it lasts nearly a week. One of the essential ingredients of dimethyl phthalate is also essential to the manufacture of DuPont Dulux enamel, which in peacetime gives durability and lasting beauty to such things as refrigerators, automobiles, electrical equipment, furniture and machinery, as well as the woodwork and walls of your home. The reason you have difficulty in buying DuPont Dulux is that dimethyl phthalate is protecting the health of our armed forces, not only against sand f- sandfly fever, but against malaria, dysentery, and dengue fever. After the war, you will not only have Dulux again, but you will have new insect repellents made better with dimethyl phthalate, one of many compounds manufactured by DuPont for better things, for better living through chemistry. Now, here is Cavalcade's commentator, Walter Houston. Next Monday evening, we of Cavalcade will have the proud honor of welcoming the return to the entertainment field of one of America's foremost motion picture stars, Clark Gable, who served with distinction in the United States Armed Air Forces. Next week, Clark Gable will enact his first role since his return to civilian life. The role, and a most fitting role it is, will be that of a fellow fighting man, Submarine Commander Gilmore, who fought and died above and beyond the call of duty. Our play is based on three words and the man who spoke them. Three words that have already become history and legend. Take her down. Around these three words is woven one of the most glorious stories of courage to come from this or any other war. I am sure your anticipation is as great as ours to hear Clark Gable in his first radio appearance in next week's Cavalcade. Take her down. Thank you and good evening. May I repeat Walter Houston's invitation to join us next Monday when DuPont will again bring you another great play and a famous star. Next Monday night on the Cavalcade of America, Clark Gable as Commander Gilmore in the story that has become a legend, Take Her Down. Joan Fontaine appeared on tonight's Cavalcade through the courtesy of David O. Selznick and will soon be seen in a reissue of the Selznick Academy Award-winning picture, Rebecca. The music was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. May I take this opportunity also to remind every eligible woman between the ages of 20 and 36 that the Navy still needs more personnel. The girl who joins the waves in the next several weeks can be assured of immediate active duty and a wide range of opportunity. You do not obligate yourself by finding out. You may call for information at your nearest Navy recruiting office or write to Waves, Washington, 25, D.C. for the free booklet, The Story of You in Navy Blue. This is Gain Whitman, sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor E.I. DuPont, D. Namours and Company of Wilmington, Delaware, and invite you to be with us next week for Clark Gable in Take Her Down. This is the National Broadcasting Company.